Welcome ladies and gents, this is Oxlord speaking, yes the one right in the flesh, no need for the autographs. In today's video, which may or may not be part of a bigger series, we're going to be ranking some famous pieces of malware. This is definitely a 100% original, not copied idea. Before ranking this malware, we'll run it in an isolated virtual machine to see it in action. The criteria for the rankings will be based on two things. One, creativity, flair, flamboyance, whatever you want to call it. This is things like the look, the vibe of the virus. And two, the damage. It is malware after all. When originally planning this video, I was actually thinking on an additional criteria called modernization, and it's how effective is this virus against modern machines, but I felt like that might get me in the naughty zone with YouTube, so I left it out. The malware I picked was based on strenuous research that took me hours and hours of complex work. Uh, <clears throat> Initially, I actually wanted to test some very complex and infamous viruses like the I Love You and the Melissa virus, but let me be the first to tell you, finding them is hard. Sometimes, even if you do find a supposedly working sample, it just doesn't work. But just when I was about to give up, I found my savior, a perfect GitHub repository containing exactly the types of malware I needed. We're not going over all of them, except the ones I found pretty interesting. So let's jump in. Hopping into our Windows 10 machine, our first victim is Jerry. On his desktop are two promiscuous folders, one of them called My Beloved Secrets, which seems to contain his very own meaning of life. Right. And secondly, a list of 2027 memes. Not exactly sure what I expected. And also, well, a folder of his private pictures, which seems to be every possible angle of his shaft. And finally, we have the WannaCry exe file here itself. When we first run it, it seems to generate all these garbage files. And after a while, it changes our wallpaper to this, encrypting all of our files in the process. As for our meaning of life, it seems to have turned to scoring Chinese social points. It also seems like WannaCry straight up deleted our files for whatever reason. And there it is, the infamous Wanna Decryptor. As you can see, this particular piece of malware is pretty flamboyant. All the red, the wallpaper, the little shenanigans, and given that it encrypts all your files, I'd say the damage is pretty high. It's also incredibly iconic and notorious, so straight into pwned. Our second virus is called 000. I couldn't find Squad on its origins except a YouTube video from who seems to be the creator himself. It's supposedly a creepy pasta virus. Our victim this time is none other than Larry, the local IT admin of our network. He has one folder in his desktop called Company Data. In it are folders for all employees, except we're only interested in his, which has, well, you guessed it. And that needs to be blurred. The executable is right here. Running it initially seems to have done no effect. It simply sent the computer to a getting ready state. But when you boot it back up, you're met with this. Signing in with the new username but same password gets you into this mess, and after a while multiple windows spin up saying run away. Nice. Now I did sign in back as a fresh version of Jerry to check if the damage is system wide, and it isn't. I actually signed in as a different user later and got the runaway windows preventing me from doing anything, so maybe the damage is system wide? Maybe it just took a while for it to spread. Just don't try it on your personal machine. Although this definitely increases the damage of the virus, I won't change my later score. Although now that I didn't have those cancerous windows to deal with, I could click on this peculiar file called Open Me, and this is what's inside. You are the next. I can see you. Now it's too late. I got you. You have been warned. Don't look behind you. For the sake of not humiliating myself, I won't say whether or not I did check behind me after reading that. Files-wise, the company data folder is empty, except for the HR folder. Not sure what that's about. I have to say, the creativity on this one is particularly good, but the damage is kind of minimal in case you have more than one user, and given that it doesn't seemingly borderline encrypt your files but it still might mess them up, I'll put it in solid. Shying away from the over-the-top malware, we get to Internet Shield, a fake antivirus. Origins turned out empty this time. Our victim now is Jim, your run-of-the-mill accountant, except his files are as normal as ever. One folder called Super Private, seemingly containing his blood work and his... Really? Ha. <laughs> Poor guy. Secondly, his diary. Nice. This malware functioned a little differently this time. It wasn't a plain exe file, rather it was a full-on application with its own installation wizard. You know what that means, baby. Windows Defender can't catch it to save its own life. Moreover, as you can see, it came in three different flavors. I couldn't execute the middle one because I was blocked by the admins, aka Larry and Jerry. It seems like they've had enough of the malware bullshit. 
The other two do run, however, and they seemingly do the same thing. When installed, it acts like a real antivirus flag in all sorts of issues, including porno sites themselves, which is pretty interesting. But Jim is a priest, I'm sure it'll find nothing. Jim, you filthy bastard. Jokes aside, none of the flagged viruses here actually exist. As expected, the AV couldn't get rid of them unless you upgraded to a paid license, and trying to do so opens the browser, goes through a couple links before getting to... Bang good? I've never heard of these guys before, although I did notice it looks almost like an exact copy of TeamU. Supposedly they're legit, but I wouldn't fully trust them if I were you. The malware didn't stop here. Although it hasn't messed with our files, it kept running in the background but with no tray icon. My money is on spyware. Solid looks and good effort, but lackluster damage and mainly an annoyance rather than full-blown virus. So I'll put it in mid. Next up is Evescape. I also couldn't find anything noteworthy on this except a YouTube video also running it. This channel owner, by the way, is the same guy with the GitHub repository, so go check him out for sure. Our victim this time is Eliza, short for Elizabeth, our senior HR manager. She's a cat mom, so she has a cat photos folder. And Zane Malik, uh, we're gonna skip that one. Interesting. Our executable is right here. Initially, due to the shield icon, I thought it'll be another fake antivirus, but it actually wasn't. Clicking on it did this. Yeah, just this. It only seems right given the victim in this case. After rebooting the computer, the effect seems to have gone away. Seemingly zero damage except a funny cat picture, I'd give it a solid meh. Now I'm not sure if this virus is actually called PowerPoint, it might be something else, but it certainly disguises itself as a PowerPoint file. Since Eliza wasn't cooked yet, I kept her as the next victim. When clicked, it restarts your computer, and when booting back up, you're greeted with this. Transcribing the Russian Indus using optical character recognition and then translating it using Google doesn't do the best job. But they're making false claims about what was on the computer, which I've noticed is a common trick they do to compel you to pay, especially if you're legitimately guilty. The payment method seems more formal this time, requiring some sort of ATM. Russia did make headlines back in 2022 for exploiting a certain vulnerability in PowerPoint, so I thought this may be related, but this was something else, presumably just run of the mill Russian ransomware disguised as a PPTX file. Given the 2008 PowerPoint icon, this might be a very old ransomware or maybe one aimed at older machines. No looks but big damage, I'll put this one in meh as well. Next up is Happy Antivirus. I have no idea who made this or where it came from, but it seemed fun so I chose it. A couple of YouTube videos were made on it, including one from the aforementioned Enderman, but nothing on its original creator. Our victim this time is Harold, the resident software engineer. On his desktop are two folders, one called Database, presumably containing important stuff about the company, and one called Gooner Material, so I'm not sure I want to click on that one to be honest. Upon clicking on the virus, you get told what settings to run on the computer to make it look best, and it seems to be expecting us to run Windows XP, but I'm too lazy to do all that, so we're sticking with Windows 10. Once you click OK, we're greeted with the most god-awful antivirus window with a boatload of state-of-the-art options of protection. Also, this picture right here might be of the creator, who knows at this point. Checking the PO traction status lets us know we're indeed very unprotected. Trying our luck with the firewall doesn't get us anywhere either, but it does produce a fake Windows BSOD error, which is always welcome, and closes the program. I ran it again because there's still stuff to explore. Trying to edit the crappy protection status just laughs at us. Can I edit my protection status, please? <laughs> Are you serious? And trying to edit the firewall status leads to the same blue screen of death. Attempting to scan leads to another vomit inducing screen where we can scan or back out. I also partially lost my vision trying to read the yellow text here. As it begins Sacknin, it jump scares you with this, very baldy's basic energy. Apparently some virus was detected, so we can either remove it or leave it as it is. Problem is, trying to do both is refused. So I guess we have no choice. The choice then transforms into activate virus while the scanning continues in the background, leading to nothing when it finishes except a sad and pop-up. I know you waited for me to click on do not click and I did, but it only produced the original virus detected message, except for this one there wasn't any clear way of exiting. Finally, clicking on register or register led us to a website that my ISP didn't trust enough so we didn't get to see it sadly. Any unremovable state we ended up in as a result of running the virus could be circumvented by rebooting, so Looks that make it look like you're tripping on acid and practically zero damage, I'll put it in mid. Our final malware for this video is none other than Mems, this one I could actually find a creator of, and his name is Lorak. Apparently he made it for a YouTube series called Viewer Made Malware. Again, since Harold was still uncooked with his files intact, he's still our victim. Running the malware immediately warns us about how harmful it is, twice no less. 
when we proceed, it tells us that we've been fucked by the Mems Trojan and advises us not to try and delete Mems, that this is the last time we get to enjoy your computer. I personally took the challenge head on, went into Task Manager, trying to delete the many instances of Mems and immediately regretted it. Make malware great again, <laughs> brilliant. Oh, look at that, Bunzy Buddy Easter egg. After this, our computer restarts and is stuck on Neon Cat, supposedly indefinitely. I don't know about you, but this seems like a win to me. There aren't any looks to speak of except the cat, but it's pretty fun all around, so I'll put it in solid. So, this is the final tier list. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Anyways guys, that's been it for this video. This has definitely been very enjoyable, so let me know if you'd like to see more by smashing that like button. Obviously, all of the malware we saw only messed with Windows, so perhaps trying Linux next can be of interest. More videos like this and also about interesting topics like philosophy will be uploaded in the future, so subscribe if that's something you want to see. That's it for me. Stay true and healthy.